Welcome back to Tantrums and Tabletops for our first episode of Adventures with Fiendy Printing. We're going to look at how to make a fantasy character using a resin 3D printer and the wonders of the internet. Today we're having a look at the Hero Forge website. You can see I've got it loaded up on my screen here with a female character, female human, even though you can choose many other different species, different species top. You can scroll through all of these. So many to choose from. It's almost limitless to create your own perfect character for any board game you can think of, even though it's mainly used for Dungeons and Dragons. You can choose different types of clothing. So as you can see here, I've got my female character in quite a revealing garb, but it could be a medieval executioner. And you're not limited just to the female clothes, you could put the male clothes on them if you want, and it still conforms to the shape of the body, which is really good. It could be a gladiator outfit. That's a bit more revealing, we don't want to see that. These are the made outfits that are ready to go, but you can go in and choose specific ones just for yourself. So if I wanted a half face covering just like that, or if I wanted a dwarven crown, it really is limitless what you can do with these. You can also paint them, different colours, whatever you want. You can choose a theme. And you can order, you can save it just as and share on social media. Uh, I've seen many pages on Reddit that do this kind of thing. Or you can buy the files yourself and 3D print them, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to go to my pre-made characters that I've made myself, I've made several. So we've got Hondo, we've got Lady of Arrows, we've got Landlord, just for, just for fun. I made, I actually made a whole band at one point. We've got a lute player, a percussion player, a violin player. The characters we're going to concentrate on today would be the Wandering Swordsman and Lynn the Hero of Time. Lynn the Hero of Time is a, a female take on Link from The Legend of Zelda and the Wandering Swordsman is based on a young version of Vesemir from the it. Witcher series. Now you can purchase these as I already have done and I'll show you what they look like when you purchase them. So I am in my software of choice, which would be Chitu Box. I have purchased the two characters we, as we have here. We have my Wandering Swordsman and Lim the Hero of Time. I'm going to select both. These, for all intents and purposes, are ready to 3D print, but there are a few things you need to do. Now, I am no means an expert at this. I just do what I'm told from all the forums and all the websites that give advice on this. They're much better at this than I have. The rule of thumb generally is to rotate your character by 45 degrees on the x-axis to be like so and you will definitely want to add supports now Chitu Box has its own support system I tend to add to all and it will generate the supports for you which is fantastic so the supports are generated you then go down you select slice and then roughly down here you get given a time of how long it will take to print I use the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro it is not the newest of printers for resin, but for my setup, I print out of a shed. It works very well for what I need to do for it. it. Gives you a breakdown of how much you're going to use in terms of milliliters of resin. I use water washable resin. It's an easier process for me to do. It means that I don't have to have IPA knocking about. I have young kids and fingers like to get in everywhere. It gives you how much it's gonna weigh roughly a price of how much it's going to cost to print these two figures as well then you can save to a flash drive load it into the printer and hit go it's going to take a little under two hours and 20 minutes to print so let's get to it the printer lowers the build plate into the resin tank Using photopolymer resin which is reactive to light, the printer will print lines of the model using an LCD screen and LED lights under the tank. It will then remove the plate from the screen and repeat the process until the print is complete. Once the print is complete, the figures are removed from the build plate straight into a cleaning tank for the first part of post-processing. Once the prints have been cleaned, they go onto the cure station, bathing in ultraviolet light to cure the figures fully before handling. Ah, the dreaded trimming and cleanup. There are discussions amongst hobbyists of which to do first, cleaning slash curing or support removal. 
I prefer a fully cured Mini as there is less chance of skin contamination from the resins, although this does leave the supports rather brittle and a delicate touch is advised. Here we have our fully printed Minis, free of supports, cleaned up and ready for priming. Now time for a crappy painting montage. And now, let's look at the final result. So as you can see, even someone with my mediocre painting skills can still be in the same town as the ballpark that the big boys play in. If you've enjoyed this little video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and maybe leave a comment down below with ideas for future printing projects. I also have an FDM printer which is ideal for printing larger projects like C. See you guys next time!